In this lesson, you're going to learn how to solve linear equations containing decimals. And the purpose of this lesson is to solve each equation by clearing the decimals. So remember, in another lesson, you solved equations by clearing the fractions. In this case, you're going to solve equations by clearing the decimals. Now, the uh, purpose of this lesson is to um, solve these equations in the sense that you don't have access to a calculator. So when doing these, these um, problems, the idea is that if you don't have access to a calculator, how, how can you solve these equations efficiently without having to divide or multiply decimals? That, that's the intent of, of this lesson. And so when you are looking at your uh, Nunalta assignments, um, there is a section in Nunalta on this idea. So let's look at that first one. So in that first equation, <clears throat> notice that we have, and when you read this, I'm going to read it as, as you would mathematically. You would say this is 9 tenths x minus 4 and 1 tenth equals 0 and 4 tenths. Remember how to read these decimals. And so, so when, when thinking about well, how can I rewrite these decimals so that way these are integers instead, instead of decimals. So you want this to be integers. And so if you recall the steps from a previous um, lesson that you used, and I went ahead and I included this, um, this bullet right here. So remember um, these steps to simplify both sides of an equation. So it would be step one in solving a linear equation. You're going to clear parentheses using distributive property. You're going to combine like terms. If fractions exist, you're going to clear the fractions by multiplying both sides by the LCD. And then if decimals exist, which, which they do in, in our example, we're going to clear the decimals by multiplying both sides by multiple of 10. And so that's the idea. So you, you're either going to multiply by 10 or 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 and so on. And then the rest of these properties still apply. So you're going to use the addition subtraction property of equality. You're going to use the um, uh, multiplication or division property of equality and so on. Okay? <clears throat> All right. So let's think about this. So I want you to think about this, this 0 0.9 that you see. So I'm going to go over here and just talk about it a little bit more. So, so when, when you read this, when you read this, you have to realize that 0 0.9 is really 9 tenths, right? So it's just fraction 9 tenths. And so if I have, let's say, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, you all know that when reading this and, and you look at the digit that's in the last place, <clears throat> the, the, the place value, that last digit, uh, you read this as 15 hundredths, right? <clears throat> if you have, let's say, um, uh, 2.83, then you're going to read this as 2 and 83 hundredths. So that's how you read these. So, so when, when you're working on these examples, these problems with decimals in it, you're going to use this idea. Well, what, what are they as fractions? Okay. So let's talk about this for a moment. <clears throat> um, this is nine tenths, right? So, so if you think about this, I can rewrite this as as nine tenths x minus four and one tenth equals, and then this is four tenths. Y'all agree? And so, if you were to just indicating this for a moment, if you were to, and notice I wrote these as fractions now. So I went from these decimals to these fractions. And so notice that, that if fractions exist, you can clear the fraction by multiplying both sides by the LCD. So the LCD is 10, right? Okay, so now you can do one of two things. You can go over here and multiply both sides by 10, or you can use this one. Um, sometimes what students do is, is they'll go back to this one, to the decimals, and they'll multiply both sides by 10. If you wanted to use this one, that's fine. You just have to remember, you now have to rewrite this mixed number as an improper fraction. So we'll do it both ways just to show you. So I have 0.9x minus 4.1 equals 0 0.4. All right, those are decimals here. And I'm going to do it both ways. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I see tens all the way across, I know that that if, if I want this these decimals to be whole numbers or integers, I need to multiply both sides by 10. Okay? 
So times 10, just like this, and then times 10. All right, so remember, you can distribute now. So I want, I want you to remember something from previous course. If you multiply, so let's say I had um, uh, 7.2, all right? If I multiply 7.2 by 10, I multiply 7.2 by 10, you remember what the effect of multiplying by mul multiple of 10 does. So multiplying by 10 moves the decimal point one place to the right, so that's 72. If I have 7.2 times, let's say, 100, all right, multiplying by multiple of 10, so 100 is 10 squared, so that's a multiple of 10. That effect, what it does to 7.2 is it, multi it, it moves the decimal point two places to the right, so that's going to equal 72, uh, I'm sorry, 720. Okay, so if I have 8.6358, let's say that, and I multiply by, let's say, 1,000, then what multiplying by 1,000 does is it takes this decimal point and it moves it, and you see there's um, uh, 1,000 is 10 to the third, right? 10 to the third. So it moves it three places. Look at that exponent or look at the number of zeros. It multiplies, it, it moves it three places, one, two, three, to the right. So that would be 8635.8. So that's what the effect of multiplying by multiple of 10 does. It moves the decimal point to the right so many places depending on on the number of zeros you have or the number of multiples of 10 involved okay the factors of 10 involved okay so I have 10 and I'm gonna go ahead and write it just, just to kind of explain it a little bit further as we go so I have 10 times that's a times here um, let, me, let me not use uh, this symbol for multiplication since I'm using an X I'm gonna do this I'm gonna just say in parentheses um, 0 0.9 X just like that okay minus 10 times 4.1 just like that equals and then 0 0.4 times 10 okay and and just be careful because you have you have decimals see this is a decimal point and this right here indicated the multiplication so, so be careful. Don't, don't confuse all those little uh, points with the wrong idea. So this is 0 0.4 right here. Okay, so 10 times 0 0.9 is 9, right? So you move the decimal point one place to the right, so that's 9x minus 10 times 4.1 is 41 equal. And then um, uh, 10 times uh, 0 0.4 is 4, all right? And then now you're going to now 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 you have an equation without decimals, so so that makes things a lot easier for you. See, there are no decimals involved, and so now you're going to use steps two through three. All right, so we're going to use the addition property of equality to add 41 to both sides, and when I do that, a negative 41 plus 41 is zero. 9x plus zero is 9x. I get 9x equal, and then 41 plus 4 is 45. And then we are on step four, where you're going to use, the, in this case, the division property of equality. So I'm going to uh, divide both sides by 9 to get x by itself. 9 divided by 9 is, is 1. 1 times x is x equal. And then uh, 45 divided by 9 is 5. And that's it. So you see, it's very simple. But that's the intent of this lesson. The intent of this lesson is for you to understand um, uh, without the access to a calculator per se, how can I rewrite this so to, to make this equation so much easier for me to deal with? And that's what you do. So you're going to multiply, you're, you're going to, if decimals exist, you're going to clear the decimals by multiplying both sides by a multiple of 10. Okay? All right, let's look at another example. Oh, well, I want to go back and, and I said I was going to go back and redo, um, do the same problem but using the fraction. So let's do that. Just show you what you do. So if you want to use a fraction instead, you would do this. Just, just to remind you, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it um, this way. So we have 9 tenths x minus 4 and 1 tenth equal 4 tenths, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and rewrite this mixed number as an, as an improper fraction. So 10 times 4 is 40. 40 plus 1 is 41. So I get 9 tenths x minus 41 tenths equals 4 tenths. And so now I'm going to clear, let me go ahead and move this out of the way. So I'm going to clear the, um, the fractions by multiplying both sides by 10, just like this. All right. 
and so I'm going to get 10 uh, times 10 times 9 tenths x minus 10 times 41 tenths equals 4 tenths times 10, right? And so reducing the tenths divide out here, so, so 1 times 9x is 9x minus the tenths divide out here, 1 times 41 is 41, equal, and the tenths divide out here, and you're left with 4. And then notice, I just want you to notice something, this equation here looks just like this one, okay? All right, and so you just continue on with the rest. So you'd say you would add 41 to both sides, and then combine like terms, you get 9x equal 45, divide both sides by 9, and reduce, and you get x to be 5. All right, so it does not matter. It does not matter uh, whether you, once, once you find, in your mind, you're reading 9 tenths, 4 and 1 tenth, 4 tenths. So it does not matter whether you multiply the decimal equation um, by 10 or you multiply the fractional equation by 10. All right, you'll still get, you will still get the um, same solution, okay? But notice, nowhere in here did you see me use a calculator. Nowhere in there did you see me use a calculator. So that's the intent of, of this, um, this objective here is, is just to show you what you would do if you have decimals and you needed and you didn't have access to a calculator and, and uh, uh, you needed a, a more efficient way to solve this. Okay? All right, so let's look at number two. So number two, let's suppose we had this in number two. Um, let's see. So this would be number two. Okay, number two. We have um, 5x minus 2.6 equals 2x plus 1.6. Okay? All right. So that's what we have. All right. So so let's, so I have decimals. Okay? You, you, you don't want to deal with, with, with decimals. So the, the intent here is to clear the decimals by multiplying both sides by a multiple of 10. So when I read this, and, and think about this, when, when you read this, right here, the, the um, 2.6, remember 2.6 means 2 and 6 tenths, right? And then the 1.6, that's the only other decimal I see, is 1 and 6 tenths. So if you look, the denominators are 10, right? So then what you're going to do is, if you want to stick with with the decimal part, then what you're going to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. All right, you multiply both sides by 10. That's what you're going to do. Because this is 6 tenths, this is 6 tenths. All right? So that common denominator is 10. The least common denominator would be 10. And then you're going to, you're going to multiply. 10, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. It looks like this. 10 times 5x minus 10 times 2.6. Now, don't confuse this this uh, point here with a decimal. That that's multiplication. So, so I'm going to just go ahead and do that, just just so there's no confusion. So, 10 times 5x minus 10 times 2.6 equals 10 times 2x. Distribute uh, plus 10 times 1.6. All right, so remember, 10 times 5x, 10 times 5 is 50. That's easy. So that's 50x minus 10 times 2.6. So remember, when, when you multiply any decimal by, in this case, 10, you move the decimal point one place to the, to the, to the right. So notice the intent is to get, is to get these, these decimals to be integers, so our whole numbers. Um, so 10 times 2.6 is 26 equal 10 times 2 is 20, so that's 20x plus, and then 10 times 1.6 is 16. So now notice I have a very simple, a very simple equation, and, and I, I use the word simple, but what I mean by that is that there are no decimals. I have integers, 50, a negative 26, 20, and a positive 16. And so now it's very easy to deal with, right? Very easy to deal with. So um, let's go ahead and I'm going to, I'm using now steps two and three to bring the variables to the in this case I'm bring the variables to the right the variable terms to the right 
and the constant terms, I'm sorry, the variable terms to the left and the constant terms to the right. So let's subtract 20x from both sides. Make sure you say 20x minus 20x, just like this. 50x minus 20x is 30x minus 26 equal, this is 0, and that's 16. Adding 26 to both sides, um, in combining like terms, I get 30x equal 16 plus 26 is going to be, what's that, 42? Alright, 42, right? And so dividing both sides by 30, dividing both sides by 30, 30 divided by 30 is, is 1, 1 times x is x, I get 42 divided by 30, but make sure it's reduced, go ahead and reduce it, so they're both, right now they're both divisible by 2, and then also there, you can um, also see they're both divisible by 6, right? But let's suppose you, all, all you said was, all right, I know they're both even, so they have, to, they have to be both divisible by 2, right? So 42 divided by 2 is 21, 30 divided by 2 is 15, but you can go further. Um, so they're both divisible by, in this case, 3. So 21 divided by uh, 3 is 7, and then 15 divided by 3 is 5. So that's your solution. And so if you want to write it as a mixed number, you can. 5 into 7. So 5 goes into 7 one time. 1 times 5 is 5. Um, 7 subtract 5 is 2. So you get 1 and 2 fifths. Okay? All right, so that's, 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 that's what you do. That, that's all you do. All right, now let's look at this one. So this is going to be number, number 3. All right, so listen carefully to number 3. So number 3. All right, so number 3, we have um, 3.1x. And, and really, you, uh, we, we, we say 3.1, but mathematically, this is read 3 and 1 tenth. And that's going to be important when, when you actually decide what are you going to multiply both sides of this equation by? So remember, to clear the decimals, you're going to have to multiply by a multiple of 10, either 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so on. Minus 1.05 equals 1.7x minus 0.07. Okay, so let's think about this for a moment, all right? Let's think about this. Let's go ahead and write all of these as fractions. And so when you read this, this is read 3 and 1 tenth x, just like that, minus 1, and you read this as 5 hundredths, right? So 5 hundredths, just like that, equal, and this is read as 1 and 7 tenths x, and then minus, and then this is 7 hundredths here, okay? So if, if you were to uh, go ahead and clear the fractions, what would be your least common denominator? You have 10, 100, 10, 100. What's the least common denominator? So the least common denominator would be 100, right? So now let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and go back to the decimal part here. All right. And let's go ahead and rewrite this. 3.1x minus 1.05. Those are decimals. Um, equal 1.7x minus 0 0.07. And so what we're going to do now is, is, is we're going to multiply both sides by 100 just like this. Okay? Very simple. It's a very simple process. Not difficult at all. But at least so far, it's not difficult at all, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and distribute. Use the distributive property. So remember, uh, clear parentheses using distributive property if, if, if needed, and we do need to do that here. So I get 100 times 3.1x minus 100 times 1.05 equals 100 times 1.7x minus 100 times 0.07. All right, see that? Not difficult. All right, so remember, the whole, the whole uh, when, when, whenever you multiply by a multiple of 10, you're going to move the decimal point to the right, the a certain number of factors, right? So, so 100 is 10 to the second power, so I need to multiply this decimal point, I'm sorry, I need to move this decimal point two places to the right or you can just count the number of zeros. So 100 times 3.1 is 310x. We'll move it two places to the right, so you get 310. Minus 100 times 1.05, we'll move the decimal point two places. Let me go ahead and, and um, kind of do it here. So let me just do this. Uh, 
So I, I, I don't want to write it here to have all that other stuff. So 100 times 1.05, so remember what that does, that, that moves this decimal point two places to the right. So you get 105. So make sure you understand that. Okay? So that's 105 equal. And then 100 times 1.7 is 170x minus, and then 100 times 0 0.07, and you move it two places, right? So that's 7. That's all that is. That's 7. Okay? All right, so now that's that's pretty easy to deal with now, and so so let's go ahead and use the properties of equality, the uh, addition, the multiplication, the addition, subtraction property of equality to get the variable terms and constant terms on each side. So I'm going to subtract 170x from both sides. All right, now remember when we talked about this, I'm going to try the best I can on doing this. But when we talked about this, we we indicated that that. Um, uh, this this whole objective here was to show you what to do in the event that you didn't have a calculator. So let's go ahead and do this without a calculator. So 310 subtract 370, right? Uh, 310 minus 170, excuse me. So 0 subtract 0, 0. Um, I have to take 1 from the 3, borrow 1 from the 3. So that's uh, 11 minus 7 is 4, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So I get 140. You'll agree? That's 140x minus 105 equal, this is 0, um, negative 7. Then we're going to add 105 to both sides, correct? And so let's go ahead and do the same thing. Combine like terms. Notice, notice that, that, um, these two numbers are different signs, so I'm going to have to subtract. So I'm going to say 105, subtract 7. So I can't take 7 from 5, set the bar from the 10, that's a 9, and 15. So uh, 15 minus 7 is going to be, what's that, 8, and then 98, correct? So that's 98. 105, subtract 7, gives us 98. Okay. So that's 98. So I have, I have 140x equals 98. And then finally, all I do is divide uh, both sides by 140, by 140, and then reduce. And so I get x to be 98 divided by 140. And so reducing this, they're both divisible by 2. So let's see, 2 into 98, they're both even, right? So they're both divisible by 2, at least to know that. Um, let's see what we get. 2 into 9 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Subtract um, nine, uh, 8 from 9, you get 1. Bring down the 8. 2 into 18 is 9. So that's 49. And then 140 divided by 2 is 70. And that's it. So x equals 49 divided by 70. And so that's it. All right. That's, that's basically what you do. No, it's not difficult at all. Not difficult at all. Okay. Now, if you had, just, just to um, remind you, um, if you had decided, you saw I went back and I, and, and, I mul and, and then found the LCD to be 10, and I went back and multiplied both sides of the decimal equation by 10, you could have, you could have chosen this one. I just want to show you what, what you would need to do, though, okay? So, so I have, I'm going to rewrite this over. I have 3 and 1 tenth x minus 1 and 5 hundredths equals 1 and 7 tenths x minus 7 hundredths. All right, you first of all need to rewrite all these mixed numbers, and there are three here. This, this, is, the, the, uh, this is a proper fraction. That's not a mixed number. So you need to rewrite all these mixed numbers as improper fractions. So 10 times 3 is 30. 30 plus 1 is 31. So you get 31 tenths x minus 100 times 1 is 100. 100 plus 5 is 105 hundredths equal, and then 10 times 1 is 10, 10 plus 7 is, is um, uh, 17 tenths x, and then, oops, minus, and then 7 hundredths, right? And so now you can see that the um, least common denominator, the least common denominator is going to be 100. And so now you're going to multiply both sides by, by 100. And then when you distribute, you get 100 times 31 tenths x, um, 
and then minus 100 times 105 divided by 100, right, equals, and then distributing here, you get 100 times 17 tenths x minus, and then here, you get 100 times 7 hundredths. All right, now let's go ahead and, and reduce here. 10 divided by 10 is 1, 100 divided by 10 is 10, 10 times 31 is 310, so you get 310x minus over here, the 100s divide out, you get 105 equals, okay, here, reduce first, 10 into 10, uh, into 10 is 1, uh, 100 divided by 10 is 10, and then 10 times um, uh, 17 is 170, so we get 170x minus, and then over here, the 100s divide out, you get 7. What I want to show you, though, what I want to show you is that this right here, this right here is the same, you can see it, because I have all stuff here, is the same as as this right here. See it? This right here. So 310, let me kind of do this. So, so 310x, 310x minus 105 equals 170x minus 7. Okay? So it does not matter, it does not matter whether you multiply the 100 in this case by the equation containing decimals or you multiplied by the equation where you wrote it as fractions. Okay? Most students though um, will tend, excuse me, most students though will tend to go back to the decimal part, to the decimal equation. Okay, so that was number three. Let's look at a couple more. Okay, so number four, in number four we have this. We have um, and, and when you read it, you read it as 0 0.72 equals 0 0.4 times x plus 1.4, right? And so mathematically, though, this is read as 72 hundredths. So I'm going to go ahead and, and write it out right here. 72 hundredths equals, this is 4 tenths times x plus 1 and 4 tenths. Okay? And so... So now you can you can look at this and determine what the what what the least common denominator is here. So the least common denominator would be 100. Okay. Now don't make the mistake and distribute first. That's that's not it because because you're gonna have to multiply decimals and and the intent here is not to do any operation with decimals in that sense. So first thing you want to do is you want to clear this this uh, original uh, equation. You want to clear the decimals, so you want you want all these to be integers or um, whole numbers. Okay, you want these to be integers, and so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this right here. Rewrite this over, so I have 0 0.72 equal. I'm going to leave some space right here. Um, 0 0.4 times x plus 1.4. All right, so I'm going to leave it like this. All right, now listen carefully to to what I'm going to do, so you don't get confused. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 100. Multiply both sides by 100. And I'm going to use red, and hopefully you can see this. So I'm going to say times, times 100, just like this. And then, um, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of, I don't want to put another set of parentheses because then it'll look confusing to you. So I don't want to use another set here. So I'm going to make this a large dot to represent multiplication. So don't, don't confuse this red dot with a decimal point. That's multiplication, okay? So that's times 100. So I multiply both sides by 100. What you do to one side, you do to the other. And, and I could have used a large dot here as well. But I didn't want to put parentheses because then that would have confused you even further. All right, so I'm going to multiply these two numbers. So remember, that's 100 times 0 0.72, 7200. So you know, you know uh, the effect of multiplying this decimal by 100 is to move the decimal point two places to the right. So 100 times um, uh, 72 hundredths is 72. Equal. All right, now you're going to multiply from left to right. Remember multiplication. So 100, So because remember when you read this, this is read as 100 times 0 0.4 times this, this um, expression. So you multiply from left to right. Order of operations. So 100 times 0 0.4, you move the decimal point two places to the right, that's 40. So I get 40, and so I get 40 times um, uh, x plus 
Okay? All right? Okay, now you may say, well, you still have that decimal in there. Yeah, I do. So, so let's, let's, let's just talk about that for a moment. Okay? All right. So, if I distribute the 40, if I distribute the 40, let's see what happens. So, 72 equals 40 times, times um, um, x, right? Plus 40 times, and put a big dot there to represent multiplication, 1.4. All right, so now you're saying, well, how will I deal with this decimal that I still have in there? All right, very simple. Okay, let's, I want you to think about this. All right, so listen, I'm going to go here. Y'all agree that 40, so I'm going to rewrite this over, 40 times 1.4. All right, y'all agree that 40 is, is um, uh, uh, 4 times 10, right? And so I get 40, which is 4 times 10 times, that's times, multiplication here, 1.4. So now I'm going to multiply 1.4 times 10, which is 14. So 10, remember the or, um, multiplication is commutative. The order in which you multiply does not matter. 4 times 10 times 1.4, uh, the, you're multiplying those three numbers. The order in which you multiply does not matter because multiplication is commutative. So 10 times 1.4 is 14. So I get 4 times 14, okay? And so then you just say, well, 14 times 4, 14 times 4, uh, 4 times 4 is 16, and then 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, so you get 56. So that's that's going to be 56. So I get 72 equals 40x plus 56. So that's 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 um, one approach you can take there. You could have also done this, just to, just to remind you, okay? So when you got to this point here where you had 40 times 1.4, so that's multiplication here. You could have written this as 4 and 4, oh, I'm sorry, 1 and 4 tenths. You could have done that in your mind. 4, 40 times 1 and 4 tenths, just like this. And then rewrite this as, as um, an, an uh, improper fraction. So 10 times 1 is 10 plus 4 is 14. So I get 40 times 14 tenths, just like that. And so, and so, um, reducing 10 to 10 is 1, 10 to 40 is 4, and you get 4 times 14, which is what you saw here. See that? Okay, 4 times 14. So it does not matter, okay? It does not matter um, the approach you take. Um, you'll still get the same thing, okay? All right, so let's, so the variable term is already on this side, so let's subtract 56 from both sides. So subtract 56, and then combine like terms. All right, so 72, I've got to figure out what, what 72 subtract 56 is. So let, let's do that. 72 subtract 56. I can't take 6 from 2, so I have to borrow. Um, and then 6 from 12 is, is 6. 5 from uh, 6 is 1. So I get 16. So this is 16 equal 40x, right? Then divide both sides by 40. Divide both sides by 40, and then reduce. I get x to be... These are both even, so I know right away they're both divisible by 2. All right, some of you uh, would see also they're both divisible by 4, and then they're also both divisible by 8, right? Okay, let's go ahead and use the largest, though, just, just because of the time period. So 16, 16 divided by 8 is 2, and then 40 divided by 8 is 5. So I get 2 fifths, and so that's your solution. All right, so... That's how you would deal with this when, when you have a decimal inside the parentheses. And it's not that difficult. You just got to remember this little part here. All right. So, so um, um, you're multiplying both sides by 100. So you got to multiply from left to right. So you got to do this multiplication first. So that's where we got this 40. Then when you came to that point, then you had to think about, about these two approaches that we, that we did here. So 40, you could leave it as 40 times 1.4, and then think of 40 as 4 times 10, and then move the decimal point because of that 10, or you could have done this. You probably feel more comfortable with this one because it's, it's more conceptual for you probably, okay? All right, so that's number four. All right, let's do one more with this. It's not difficult. It really is not. Um, you, you, you can handle this. Okay, so let's look at this. So we have 0.06x 
minus 0 0.1 times x minus 2 equals a negative uh, 0 0.16. All right, so um, now these are all decimal points here. All right, so when, when thinking about what you're going to multiply both sides of the equation by, think about what this means mathematically. So I know we read as 0 0.06, but in reality this means, and I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this right here, so in reality this means 6 hundredths, right? Okay, so that's 600 x minus 0 0.1 means 1 tenth, okay, times x minus 2 equals a negative, and then 0 0.16 means 16 hundredths. So now you can tell me what the least common denominator is. So the least common denominator is 100 in this case. So if you go back to your decimal, if you go back to your decimal equation and rewrite it, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this, 0.06x minus um, 0 0.1 times x minus 2 equals a negative 0 0.16, okay? So, so if, if you want to clear the decimals first, now you've got to think of this as two terms here. So you have to put all of this in, in the, I'm going to use brackets here, all this in brackets. So all of this on this left side has to be multiplied by 100. And the right side, I'm going to put a big dot here for multiplication, and the, the right side also times 100. Okay? All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this bracket by multiplying. Now you got to think of this, and let me go ahead and, and kind of make it darker here. You got to think of this as one term, and you got to think of this as another term. Okay? Because you, you have this subtract this. So you have to do it this way. You're going to say 100 times this, and then 100 times this. Okay? That's important. You see that. So I have 100 times 0 0.06. That's the decimal point right here. X minus 100 times this. 100 times the darker dot represents multiplication. Um, 0 0.1 times X minus 2 equals, and then negative 0 0.16 times 100, okay? All right, now let's start with this one. So this is 100 times 0 0.06, so multiplying this decimal by 100 has the effect of moving the decimal point two places to the right, so this becomes 6. 100 times 0 0.06 is 6, I get 6x. Minus, all right, now be careful here, you have so, so that's very similar to what we talked about here, just, just to kind of remind you right here, okay? All right, so 100 times 0 0.01, you do that multiplication first. You multiply from left to right. 100 times 0 0.01, so you got to move the decimal point two places, two places to the, to the right, so that's 10. 100 times um, uh, 1 tenth, 100 times 0 0.01 is 10, so that's 10 times x minus 2. Notice there's no decimal here, just like we had here, there was a decimal, so we have to do a little bit more work there. So we're good here, that's going to be easy kind right there. Equal, and then uh, negative uh, 0.16 times 100 is just negative 16. That's negative 16. And so notice I have, I have a, an equation, an equivalent equation, in which there are no fractions or decimals. All right, so the solutions to this equation will be the same as the solution to this because they're all equivalent. So let's go ahead and distribute the negative 10. So I get 6x minus a negative 10 times x is a negative 10x. A negative 10 times a negative 2 is a positive 20. All right, so be careful. Equal negative 16. Combining like terms, 6x and a negative 10x is a negative 4x. So I get negative 4x plus 20 equal negative 16. Subtracting 20 from both sides and combining like terms, I get negative 4x equals a negative 16 and a negative 20 is a negative 36, right? And then um, dividing both sides by negative 4. A negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. 1 times x is x. And then remember, a negative divided by negative is a positive, right? So a negative 36 divided by a negative 4 is a positive 9. And that's it. So that, that's how you're going to deal in this lesson that we... That we um, talked about. Let me go ahead and get that first page. So, so the purpose of this lesson right here is for you to do these by first clearing the decimals. So notice nowhere 
nowhere in this process did I use a calculator. Nowhere did I bring out a calculator and show you. Okay? Alright, so that is the end of this lesson.